clairvoyance, expectation versus reality. So, you know, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the inner workings of clairvoyance because you know what? There's a lot of shit when it comes to this and to fully grasp it so you can apply it to yourself and use your abilities of clairvoyance, you need to know how it works. <laughs> too far in depth of like the background information and like the history of it because you can literally just google that shit and well you know that doesn't very much help you to apply it to actually use the ability so yeah that is the reason for my madness um, but if you are interested in learning about all of the, you know, all the clear abilities, all the psychic abilities, on Lights of Midnight podcast, we did do a series about all of them. And we did a series called Initiation into the Realm of Spiritual Things. And the specific episode is called Psychic Abilities and Extrasensory Perception. And then there's like a sister episode which is like like a second part of that specific episode called identifying psychic abilities and that gets into like the abilities in between the main clears and honestly i highly recommend checking it out and i'll have it linked some way shape or form whether that's in the description and the cards or the end screen or technically end screen <laughs> but okay I have a shit ton of notes because, dude, I channeled the for what? Holy shit, it's 2 in the morning. Holy fuck. Okay, I channeled from like 7 p.m. to now and I just got done writing. My wrists are sore, but Spirit had a lot to say because, let me tell you, I wanted to make sure I got this right. But so. Back to the whole clairvoyance thing. Long story short, you know, it's an ESP ability. Perceiving things or events in the past, present, future, in addition to otherworldly beings that is beyond normal sensory. Visions and second sight are other terms for this type of ESP and involves using your consciousness to tap into another person's mind body or spirit, the spirits of the dead, non-human entities, hidden objects from physical sight, and so on and so on. When paired with other abilities, it can turn into additional abilities, which like I said, we cover in those podcast episodes, such as remote viewing or actual projection, psychometry, discernment, healing, casting out entities, and that's just to name a few. It is important to understand that not all psychics and or mediums have this ability and not all psychics and mediums are the same and they're all different in their own way. However, there are people who don't realize what they've got due to the lack of understanding of this ability. It's nobody's fault really, except for its portrayal in, you know, movies and television and other types of media. The most common thing I see in movies and television is that the psychic medium or medium, you know, sees straight with their eyeballs, which, eh, most of the time, that's not how it is. It is possible, and there are many mediums that do perceive information this way. However, that is not the majority. Actually, most people see with their third eye, which is closely related to the sixth chakra, AKA the third eye chakra, depending on cultures though, because 
Some cultures say the sixth chakra and the third eye chakra are not the same, but from the vast majority, you know, of us, we kind of pretty much learn under one source and that says, you know, it's the same. So for purposes of learning, we're going to say it is from the same thing. Okay. And is the energy center located in the center of the forehead just above the brows? So like right here. Boop. The reason I'm mentioning this part is because in order to use this ability or at least make it easier on yourself to use this ability on command, you must fully understand how it works to its entirety. Meaning, knowing how this ability works with your body's energy systems and its working relationship to energetic systems outside of the body is key. Your third eye, aka the sixth chakra energy system, is in charge of intuition, perception, and spiritual awareness. Think of the chakras as energetic filters. They filter the different types of energies, vibrations, or frequencies, reads them, and turns them into perceivable information. And a lot of times, beginning with your root chakra, especially when dealing with earth energies and energies of the earth realm, and each are a step in the filtration system process, with the crown chakra being the last step. Now, the thing is, everybody takes an in information or energy differently. So, Sometimes, depending on where you're getting your information or your energy or whatever, a lot of times when it's earth energy, you're going to get it from your hands and your feet and you're going to filter it through your root chakra and you're going to go up. However, when you gain information or energy from spirit, it comes down from your crown chakra. That's why it's different. But a lot of us, you know, take in the energy from our root chakra. As the energies work their way through the body, once it reaches the third eye, this is where it translates into helpful information or perceptual data, intuition, and spiritual awareness. This can happen between your chakras simultaneously and with sometimes various points of entry depending on the person. Like a filter, when one chakra gets clogged, it can negatively impact the rest by limiting the amounts of energy being filtered and processed. So a good example, let's say your root chakra is clogged. Well, it's going to prevent the energy from being able to go up and go through your other chakras and vice versa. On the other hand, you can have an overreactive chakra where it works twice as hard as the others and overloading them with energy that can't be processed quickly or adequately enough. So I suspect personally, I have an overactive solar plexus chakra and I perceive a lot of energy through that. And because it's working overtime, that's how I get a lot of the abdominal issues that I have. So yeah, this too can be just as harmful as a blocked chakra. Now that we understand how energy is filtered through the body, let's talk about how it's even possible to gain specific types of information from energetic frequencies, vibrations, or technically energy as a whole. For example, how we are able to gain access to information from a person, place, thing, the deceased, other beings, etc., even when we are physically nowhere around them with these ESP abilities. The answer to this is complicated and goes back to meta and quantum physics. We first have to understand the foundation of how everything is connected. Because everything is connected, it allows us to tap into energies that are far away. We can do this through quantum entanglement non-locality and string theory. Non-locality suggests that particles can be instantaneously connected regardless of the distance between them due to quantum entanglement, 
where two or more particles become entangled and exhibit correlated behavior regardless of the distance between them. This means that changes to one particle instantaneously affect the others, even if they are separated by vast distances. String theory can be then used to explain quantum entanglement within non-locality. In simplest terms, string theory is the idea that the fundamental building blocks of the universe are not point-like particles, but tiny vibrating strings. These strings oscillate at different frequencies and give rise to different particles and forces in the universe. One of the peculiar aspects of string theory is that it allows for existence of extra spatial dimensions beyond the three we experience in everyday life, aka the quantum realms that are compactified at microscopic scales, making them difficult to detect, obviously, because they're so freaking tiny. The presence of these extra dimensions in string theory provides a way for particles to interact over large distances without violating the principles of relativity. The connection between non-locality and string theory arises from the fact string theory incorporates the principles of quantum mechanics. In string theory, particles are not considered as separate entities, but rather as different modes of vibrations of underlying strings. This allows for the possibility of entanglement between particles leading to non-locality through the consequence of the underlying interactions between the vibrating strings. During entanglement, the strings' complex interactions with other strings leads to correlated behavior between the particles they give rise to. If you think about it, you will see the link of interconnectedness on a subatomic level. At the end of the day, everything is made up of different types of energy that communicates or interacts with one another. So now apply this understanding to energy that makes up the body and the energy outside of it. With proper understanding, it will be much easier to learn how we can use the information provided by the energy around us to our advantage. This knowledge can be applied to all psychic or ESP abilities. The only thing that is different is how our body filters and perceives the information through our enhanced senses. Each person is unique in that way. In the case of clairvoyance, energy is filtered, broken down, and funneled through the chakras and other energy systems of the body, thereby converting it into information that is perceived through clear sight. But what does clairvoyance look and feel like for the person experiencing it? So I kind of gave you a rundown of that. So from my perspective, because I have clairvoyance abilities, Images, symbols, or motion pictures, like movies playing in my head, are transmitted to my mind's eye or third eye. I just say mind's eye because of how I'm like explaining this. So like I see these types of visions in my head, almost like it's it kind of comes in like a thought, right? Except I'm not thinking it. These images are transmitted into my head without my intending for it to happen. So like I said, the best way to describe it is comparing it to visualization. But instead of intentionally envisioning something, these visions are involuntary. Spirits, entities, and other energies like earthly energies relay this information to me and is oftentimes perceived in this way. The majority of the time when I connect with spirit or other energies, they will send me bits and pieces of information through symbols and images that oftentimes make no sense until I either write them down, draw them, somehow document them, basically, and correlate them through my life experiences, giving them only a meaning I or the client would know and or understand. It's like sitting down and putting puzzle pieces together to create a story. Sometimes the symbols and images are metaphorical and other times they are literal. When it comes to seeing different spirits and entities, typically if the spirit isn't trying to conceal their identity, I will see them for what they are in my mind's eye. 
For the sly and tricky ones that try to hide their true selves, through the use of my other Claire abilities and the help of my spirit guides, I will be able to unmask them. Once I learn their true nature, they are unable to hide their identity and I will be able to see them for what they really are. During limited contact or my guides become a buffer or I'm simply having difficulty seeing them, my spirit guides will give me literal images as references to get as close to the actual appearance as possible. So they're gonna use references that I know and understand. A lot of times it's anime and video games or just like things I've experienced really. When it comes to obtaining visual or any other type of information, when it comes to obtaining visual or any other type of information from the past, long distant present things or future things, I go into meditation with the mindset that everything is connected and not bound by time, since time only exists on the 3D and 4D levels to help us conceptualize and quantify energy in terms of motion. In the other realms, the flow of time is vastly different with varying speeds, and in some realms and dimensions, time doesn't exist at all, which is very, very trippy. Instead, everything exists everywhere all at once. Kind of like that movie, right? Which makes it easier to obtain information. But okay, I want you guys to picture this. My spirit guides show me how like they interact with the people that they're helping, you know? And I see them and I've heard, even Chastity explains it similarly, but differently at the same time. It depends, really. I mean, it's how we perceive things. So we're gonna perceive things differently as I state often. But the way I saw it is like a timeline, like you can see a flowing like energy line and it's kind of like the timeline and they can jump in wherever they want and, you know, pretty much interact with us and the surroundings. So, I mean, whether it's that way or a grid, either way, you know, spirit can jump in at any time they want and get to business no but seriously <laughs> that's how they showed me anyway so okay i then fuse that mindset of you know everything being connected and everything everywhere all at once i combine that with the intention of obtaining information which is then manifested into that information that i had been seeking because clairsentience is my strongest ability i can fuse it with my clairvoyance by using my hands or feet as a point of interest to take in and process energetic information and funnel it to be seen clairvoyantly. Um, this is how I do psychometry. I mean, that's pretty much how psychometry works in essence. But, you know, by taking an object and reading its energetic imprint, anything the object was near, I'll be able to see. But here's a side note. Psychometry can be done with clairsentience simultaneously working with other clairs. So it doesn't have to just be clairsentience plus clairvoyance. As long as clairsentience is in the mix, it can either do it by itself or with other clairs in addition to it. I personally just like to use it with my clairvoyance. I'm a hands-on visual kind of person, so it makes sense. I like to use psychometry as a way of getting information because it makes it easier for me to connect to spirit and other energies because it gives me more of a direct link. This is why I prefer to hold crystals, rocks, and other things produced by the earth, especially old things, because they've been around for thousands and sometimes millions of years. I mean, I don't know if I have any crystals that are millions of years old, but... I know they be thousands of years old and through that they've experienced a lot a lot of events and energies on rare occasions though i can see things with my eyeballs but typically when that happens the energy is very thick and dense which means even those that are less sensitive or less intuitive will be able to see those things as well. They'll be able to see them as apparitions and energy masses. And again, it's because how thick and heavy the molecules are, it just, yeah, it makes it easier to perceive it with your physical eyeballs. And it's always trippy when it happens. But I will say, um, 
because I've had that experience, I'm learning to be able to, I don't know if it's an intentional thing or if it's just my body adapting. I'm seeing things more often that way, strangely, which, you know, it's cool for me because I kind of like, I like it that way. That is just how I like to see. Because in the third eye, sometimes your ego gets in your way and you just question like, was I thinking about that? Like, was that something that was subconscious? And then you play and you play that game in your brain. And then that's why I just like to be able to go bing, bang, boom. Oop, there it is. Hoop, there it is. Anyway, I can see them or see things with my eyeballs more often now, but it's still not as often as me seeing it through my third eye or my mind's eye. So if clairvoyance is an ability that you have and you are looking for ways to practice and develop it, there are things you can do. Meditation combined with visualization exercises can help you and you can literally Google those exercises and Google will find you like a shit ton of exercises. Um, but one specific exercise that I've used for this, but also actual projection or remote viewing is where, you know, I'll sit somewhere familiar to me. I will take in the room or my surroundings, wherever I am, Try to remember where everything is. So like pens, pencils, makeup, whatever, little gadgets. You get 30 seconds to a minute, right? The point is to get faster and faster and faster at it. Close your eyes and then now try to put everything back where you saw it and try to recreate the room. Let me tell you, it can be a little tricky, but you know, you will get really good at it. It actually helps with your recall and memory too, so. And that's important. But yeah, you can do that. Um, to help you with visualization, you can read books and try to, you know, visualize what's going on in the book. I mean, it's, we learned this in school. We learned this in elementary school. Now, I understand that there are some people that, cannot visualize to save their life and I know it's kind of I feel like it goes in the same like realm of people that can't hear their own thinking voice or hear their own thoughts and when it gets to that I don't know I mean you can practice as much as you want and it could help but I don't know if it will just because if it's like a biological thing where, you know, your mind is built differently, like chemically or structurally. I'm not quite sure. I'm not a doctor, but you could try these things anyway. Another thing you can do is practice with other people. Um, if you're a beginner, I recommend practicing with one person at a time. When you mix in multiple people, that shit will get like trippy and tricky because you're going to get information from a bunch of people and you're not going to be able to know which information goes with each person. But for those of y'all who are advanced, you could do whatever you want. <laughs> so you can practice with another person and um, close your eyes and try to read that person and they are supposed to give you yes or no answers with no like, without too much details, okay? Just say yes or no. And when you get one right, observe how it felt first. Like how did that, how did that energy feel when you got it right? Remember how it felt when you received that information and that'll make it easier for you to remember what it felt like so you can go back to that feeling. My fiance's mom taught me that, and that is a valuable lesson. Keep this in mind. There will be no thinking. The images will come to you effortlessly once you get that feeling, okay? Even if what you see makes no sense, that is okay. It's not our job to rationalize it. Just let it flow and document it, again, either by writing it down or drawing it out. Don't try to figure it out or make sense of it, describe it as best you can, write it down, draw it. If you cannot describe it in words, draw it. I promise you, 
it might look weird or whatever, but if it doesn't make sense to you, it'll probably make sense to the person. And I had to learn that as a lesson when I was doing psychometry <laughs> with my mother-in-law. And again, I'm blindfolded. So I don't know what the item I'm holding is. And I don't want to know because again, ego gets in the way and it'll start giving, even if you intend to or not, your brain's going to subconsciously try to fill in the blanks. That's what our brains do. That's just how it works. But so to stop that, blindfold. I'm telling you, do it. Blindfold yourself. Eventually you won't need the blindfold because you'll be able to go back to that feeling and ignore the shit you're seeing with your physical eyes. Okay? Psychics don't tell you this. Most of them don't. And it's not because they don't want to. It's because they don't understand. But yeah. Because sometimes you'll get some things that are so like, I don't want to say vague, but it's like I was drawing this weird looking thing. It looked like to give you guys something to visualize. Eh, eh. It looked like one of those old toys where you have a pole and then it has like a cup on top, you know, like the thing where you flip the ball in the string and you try to get the ball in the string in the cup. Well, there's this thing that looked like the cup on a pole. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. It makes no sense, but that's okay. It doesn't need to make sense to me. So I drew it out and I'm like, I don't know about this. And she was like, oh my God, I know exactly what that is. And she's like, you're gonna laugh. And I'm like, what is it? I honestly forgot what it was. But she told me what it was and, I'll, and I laughed because I never would have thought of that, but she knew what it was. So that is a lesson, y'all. That is a lesson. But yeah, don't guess and don't let your ego or subconscious get in the way by worrying if you're right or wrong or trying to figure out what the thing is. And again, this is why it's really good to be blindfolded. Lastly, maintain proper mental, physical, and spiritual health. All right, your mind, body, and spirit work simultaneously together. And when one is, you know, having a problem, it's going to affect the rest. Just like your chakras. When you have a problem with one chakra, it's going to affect the rest. So it's always good to make sure you maintain good upkeep with all of those things. But so, as stated previously, there are then some things that can block your energy receptors, which will make it difficult for you to use your abilities. Some examples, poor health, mind, me or poor mental health and physical health and spiritual health will definitely mess that up and make it harder for you. Some medications. I don't want to specifically name the medications because it's different for some people. Like, for example, Benadryl. Benadryl can negatively affect a person or it can open them up, just like other drugs and even alcohol. Sometimes alcohol makes people more psychic. And yeah, so that's why I don't want to specifically list. Also, um, I don't want to run the risk either that people uh, stop their medication. We, we do not. Okay, back the fuck up. Listen to your doctor. Don't use what I say in place of medical or doctor advice, okay? Always listen to your doctor. That's why I kind of get nervous about, like, listing medications off. I can say from my point of view that, for example, gabapentin fucked me up on a spiritual level and blocked me in addition to there's some really bad side effects to that medication and I am convinced that it permanently fucked up my ability or my memory capacity because my memory now is fucked it's bad chastity knows she can tell you you know I've gotten into some disputes with people because they honestly think I'm being disrespectful, but it's not even that. It's literally the chemicals have been altered in my brain, which, um, yeah, fucked up my ability 
to uh, remember things. And it's both short term and long term. It's just, it's weird because it's like, it's not every time. It's just fragments of each thing. It's so fucking weird. But like, I can't remember shit from a month ago or even like sometimes a few weeks to a few days. Like, it's weird as fuck. It's like random. I don't know how else to explain it. I do know though, when you channel information, like when you're channeling, because it's not coming from you and it's coming from spirit, it can also make it hard to remember those things. But, um, again, medications, gabapentin for me fucked me up. And, you know, there are a list of side effects that, you know, can cause dementia and Alzheimer's and shit. So, I mean, while it didn't work for me, because I'm the side effect queen, didn't work for me, it may be helping other people with, like, nerve pain and they need it to survive. And I highly understand that especially someone with chronic illnesses so I get it that's why I mean that's why I always say like medications are different from person to person and Benadryl can fuck up people but for me makes no difference like when I'm on Benadryl I don't have any problems so unbalanced chakras overactive chakras block chakras will make it very difficult for you entities Entities can block you. They can block your psychic abilities. Um, I've seen an entity put their finger and energy over someone's third eye to block them from seeing them. And I was like, yo, that ain't cool. You ain't trying it on me, though. And, you know, there are some things you can do to, you know, get rid of that energy and I always like using the um, black tourmaline or obsidian and just putting it on your third eye. You can lay down and do it because honestly, you don't want to sit there and hold it. That's a bitch. Just lay down, put it on your third eye and it'll cleanse it out. I like doing that. Or holy oil. Or there's other types of oils. I have literally right here. I have psychic cleansing oil. You dab that shit on your third eye and voila, it's got herbs and crystals and things in the bottle that promote you know purification and healing and whatnot so you can also try that and holy water you know trauma that kind of goes with the uh mental health thing and even some physical health issues but like trauma it can also block your chakras a lot of these things kind of like commingle with one another but yeah trauma can do that um not being in your life's like what le lesson plan or not being your life purpose could also play a role okay not everyone is meant for this kind of work sleep it goes with physical health but sleep is important for me personally and again depends on person to person for me when i don't get sleep i get sick and i feel like shit but somehow i also get very psychic it's kind of like so i don't know if you go guys know the running joke i know on the podcast like if you listen to it you're probably aware of it but like the week of the full moon sleep does not exist for me i'm in my manic phase currently full moon is so as i'm recording this it is um september 27th the full moon is on the 29th so my ass ain't sleeping i'm in my manic phase i'm trying to get as many videos done as possible so i am like pumping this shit out as long as I can because I know once the full moon goes bye bye I'm gonna be sleeping for 16 hours a day to make up for it curses and hexes uh yeah witchcraft with the intention of uh blocking someone or just their intention to hurt another person can absolutely block you and your psychic abilities and then you you can block your shit because of your expectations, your ego, and your beliefs. If you believe something to be one way, you kind of put yourself in a box, right? And then you kind of end all the different possibilities of that thing working. 
right? That's what happened to me in the beginning. And that's what I noticed with the people I've encountered and worked with. It's that their expectations and their beliefs got in their way because they thought, oh, I'm supposed to see this shit with my eyeballs. Mm, Not necessarily. Some people can, but not everybody. But majority of the time, you're supposed to see it with your mind's eye. And yeah, because they believe the opposite, um, they don't see clairvoyantly, which sucks. And I feel bad. But again, it's all about how... Um, this information is being portrayed to the public. Okay? Okay. Those are just a few examples. I'm sure there's more. But this video is long as fuck. And to cut it down, I I don't want to go too crazy. But hopefully the information that I gave you gave you some insight and another perspective to how things work and allow you to progress your psychic skills and spiritual journey. So if you lasted until now, congratulations. You are a champion and you're gonna get ahead of everybody else trying. But yeah, anyway, (laughs) ha. Okay, I'm done joking. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. And because we kind of covered Claire sentience in this. That's going to be the follow up video to this. So, 31 videos in 31 days. I'm going to be dead by November. Actually, I'm kind of dead now. Kind of dead now. If, I, if I'm being real, I feel dead now. Um, yeah. But I have a list. If you're on Patreon, you saw the list of episodes, episodes or, uh, topics that I will be covering. Guys, I'm going to be pumping out a shit ton of videos. So if you're impatient like me, join Patreon for a dollar. A dollar. You'll get access to everything. You'll get even access to the Discord server where everyone's in there learning together, sharing experiences, sharing um, resources. And yeah, we're learning from one another, okay? And yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. But yeah, I'll be pumping up the videos and so you can watch them earlier before they are posted on YouTube. (sighs) We made it. We made it. We did it. We did it. We did it. But anyway, thank you guys. Peace out. If you like learning about other psychic abilities, check out this video where I teach you guys how to astral project and just tips that will help you with this skill.